I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons first. Thank you so much to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Howlers, and my Biblio Mansers. It means a lot to me that you give me your extra support for my passion and hobby. Hi everyone, Patek here. So today's video will be a big list video. About three months ago, I made this video where I asked uh, all of you on my community tab and also my followers on Twitter, I asked what's your favorite series of all time? What's your favorite fantasy series of all time? And the result was incredible. It is one of the best performing videos on my channel and I really like making that video. So today I will be making something similar because even though I like making this kind of video, well, uh, evidently, it takes a lot of time to create this kind of video. So yeah, today I will be doing a top favorite self-published fantasy books or series according to my viewers and also my followers on Twitter. In total, I got about 300 readers commenting about their favorite self-published fantasy series. And in total, there were more than 300 fantasy series mentioned. 300 self-published or indie fantasy series mentioned. And the result out of 870 votes in total, I will be allocating 315 to 15 self-published fantasy series based on the votes that I got from the community tab and also on the response on Twitter. So this video will be a top 15 self-published fantasy books or series according to 300 readers. And I'm only counting those series who receive more than 10 votes and every one of this up to this day, up to the time of recording this video, they are all still self-published. So books that were originally self-published like Legends and Latte and then it got traditionally published are no longer included in the list. Because of that, I'm happy to mention that all of the books and series I'm going to mention today, all of them are available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you are subscribed to Kindle Unlimited, you can read any one of this for free. Once again, this is not my list. I did not contribute any of my votes to any books or any series mentioned on today's video. But do know that as it turns out, I've read 11 out of 15 series I'm going to mention today. So yeah, let's begin the list now. So first, there are two series on this list with both 11 votes. And the first one is Miss Percy's Pocket Guide series by Quen B. Olson. I haven't read this series. I've heard that this one is supposedly a wholesome. And yeah, this one received many votes as you can probably tell. It got 11 votes and if it's really true that this series is a wholesome or cozy fantasy like maybe in the veins of Legends and Lattes, I think I remember Travis Baldry actually recommended this series but I could be wrong about this but Anyway, if it turns out that this is really a cozy and wholesome fantasy like Legends and Lattes, I will definitely read it someday. But yeah, this one received 11 votes and the next one also received 11 votes. This is Dreams of the Dying by Nicholas Litzau. I've read this one. I think up to this day, this is still my second, uh, my second of all time favorite self-published fantasy book. The series was originally called Andural, but due to copyright issue, it has now been titled the 12th World Series. But yeah, it is quite impressive. Even though this series only has one book out so far, it already received 11 votes. And I cannot wait to read the second book in the series, The Cure for Living. I think Nicholas Litzau is quite confident that it will be even better than Dreams of the Dying. And yeah, I cannot wait. It is easily one of my most anticipated books. The first book, Dreams of the Dying, in my opinion, is a masterpiece and it did such an incredible job in exploring mental health in fantasy and I loved it. It is a great character-driven fantasy in the Polynesian setting and the mental health exploration of the characters were so brilliant, in my opinion. And the next book or series on this list at the number 13 spot is something that is similar to The Dreams of the Dying. Only one book in the series is out so far. And somehow this one only came out last month. So this is 11th Cycle by Kian Ardalan, the first book in the Mistland series. It is a Dark Souls and Berserk inspired fantasy novel. I did a spoiler free review on this book uh, two months ago. And yeah, I absolutely love this one. I am quite surprised that on Goodreads right now, it has received uh, plenty of mixed reviews. But at the same time, I also understand that the content inside 11th Cycle can get pretty grim and it's certainly not for everyone. I think not even for the majority of readers. But as I said, I like this one and to be fair, I love Grim Dark Fantasy. So it is not a surprise that I end up liking 11 Cycle and it has received 12 votes even though it has been out only for months. I should note though that even though on Goodreads, the rating and reviews are quite mixed, 
but on Amazon, it is quite positive. The next two series on the list, both of them received 13 votes, and I think they are both grimdark fantasy. I've read one, I haven't read the other. And the one that I've read is Ash and Sand trilogy by Richard Nell. It is one of my favorite trilogy. I think many of you know about that already, and it is still quite criminally underrated. I think Richard Nell is an underrated author, and if you haven't read Ash and Sand trilogy and you love character-driven grimdark fantasy with a uh, quite distinct and original setting, I think you should give Ash and Sand trilogy a read. I think it's awesome. And the main character, Ruka, Ruka, son of Bela, is, yeah, it is one of the best grimdark character out there. And the next series with the same 13 votes, this is the one that I haven't read. And this is for the War Eternal series by Rob J. Hayes. Yeah, the series consists of five books and the cover art is done by Felix Ortiz. I think uh, all the cover art, whether it's for the paperback or the hardback edition, looks absolutely amazing. And yeah, I haven't read this one. I've heard so many great things about it, especially for the second book and beyond. But as I said, I haven't read this one. I will try to make this a priority, a series maybe next year. But hearing from plenty of booktubers and reviewers, I think it is quite safe to assume that this one is worth taking a look if you love coming of age and also grim dark fantasy. We're entering the top 10 spot now, and at the number 10, spot is for the Paternus Trilogy by Dirk Ashton. I am really happy that uh, Paternus Trilogy appeared on the list because this is an urban epic fantasy series with a lot of mythologies integrated into the entire series and they are amazing. It is epic in scope. The way Dirk Ashton uses mythologies to enhance the world building was just so creative and yeah, it is so immersive. I like this one. I thought I wouldn't like this one from the first half of the first book. Apparently, I was wrong. The first book, Paternus, Rise of Gods, was good. And then the second book, Wrath of Gods, was even better. And then the third book, my favorite of the trilogy, is amazing. It's so epic. I did not expect an urban fantasy would ever reach this scope. It is one of the biggest uh, battle scenes that I've read out of all books. So if you love urban fantasy, you love mythologies, and you love epic battles, definitely give Paternus Trilogy a read. I think Dirk Ashton still deserves more readership. And moving on to the number 9 spot, this is another series that I haven't read, but I've heard plenty of great things about. So this is Ashes of Avarin by Tiago Abdala. The first book is A Touch of Light, and then the second book is A Shade of Matters. It will be a four-book series, and I think uh, the author planned to actually complete the series either this year or next year. So yeah, not long from now. So I don't know too much about this one. I tried to enter this with as little knowledge as possible, but I heard from plenty of uh, readers and also author like Mark Rollins that this is a great character-driven grimdark fantasy. So I will definitely take a read at this one. Fingers crossed uh, within this year, but if not, within next year. This is also one of those rare series that actually uh, uses Griffin as one of the creatures, one of the main creatures of the series. That's all I know. And at the number 8 spot is a book that I've read and love. It is Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer. This was originally a one-off standalone novel, but due to overwhelming demands, it has become a trilogy. The second book, Champion of the Fallen, is not out yet, and the title of the series is Riven World. I really like Dragon Mage. I think if you have been following my channel since the beginning of this channel, I think you will have noticed me talking about Dragon Mage for, yeah, for many times, quite a lot of times. But I can't help it. I think the portrayal of the Brotherhood inside this book was incredibly well done. Uh, the relationship of the human and the dragon felt so believable because, yes, this is a Dragon Rider epic fantasy. But more importantly, I think this is the kind of fantasy book that reminded me why I love classic epic fantasy in the first place. So yeah, even though only one book is out in the city so far, I'm happy to see many people voted for this book with 18 votes. Moving on to the number 7 spot, it is a book that I recently read and reviewed. It is Legacy of the Bright Wash by Crystal Matar with 19 votes. So only one vote above Dragon Mage. And this one, again, just like Dragon Mage, only one book is out in the series so far. And this is the first book in the Tainted Dominion series. The second book, Legacy of Brick and Bone, will be out next month. Legacy of the Bright Wars surprised me. It is a murder mystery, it is a political mystery, it is also partly grimdark, but what surprised me most about this book is that it is also 
partly romance. Quite a lot of pages were devoted to romance. But I also feel like it was so well done. I end up enjoying Legacy of the Bright Watch more than I thought I would. It is a character-driven fantasy with well-realized flawed characters trying the best they can to do what's right and redeem their past. So if you are someone like me who are usually not into reading romance, understandably, I also do not like reading romance in epic fantasy usually. Try to ignore that sentiment and read Legacy of the Bright Watch if you love character-driven game dark fantasy. I think at least you will still have a great time reading this one. And not gonna lie, I'm a bit sad that my review for Legacy of the Bright Watch is most likely the worst performing review on the channel so far. And yeah, I'm kind of sad about that, but hey, I cannot help it. Not every video can be a hit, right? We're almost at the top five now, but first at the number six spot with 22 votes is Cradle by Will White, the super famous and highly praised Cradle in the sub fantasy community. And although this one is ranked at the number six spot, do know that if I actually ask what's the best of Hubbis fantasy series you have read on Reddit or our fantasy, without the shadow of the doubt, Cradle will reach the number one spot. It always happened. So let's just say that this is what happens if I don't ask Reddit. And yeah, Cradle is at the number six spot. I think I don't need to say too much about this one now. This is a great progression fantasy series. And if you love a progression fantasy, definitely read Cradle. I think well, I think it is kind of useless though. I'm going to assume that if you uh, like progression fantasy, you have read Cradle. And the 12th book, Waybound, will be out uh, in June. So not long from now, Waybound is the final book of the series. And I am curious to find out whether Will White can deliver a satisfying conclusion to the entire series. Because, well, in my unpopular opinion, book 11 was one of the weakest book of the entire series. In my opinion, anyway. But I really love the series, especially book 6, book 9, and book 10. They are uh, Underlord, uh, Bloodline, and Reaper. I think these three in particular are the best of the entire series. We're entering the top 5 ranking now, and the next two series, both of them receive 24 votes. I've read one of them, but I haven't read the other one. And the one that I haven't read is Threadlight Trilogy by Zach Argal. I think uh, many readers have mentioned, many readers and reviewers have told me that this is uh, something that is suitable to readers who like reading Mistborn or the Stormlight Archive or Lightbringers. Uh, Mistborn and the Stormlight Archive are both a series written by Brandon Sanderson and Lightbringer is written by Brad Wicks. And beyond that, I don't know too much about this trilogy. It has been on my TBR pile for quite a while now, but right now I'm waiting for the Omnibus Kickstarter uh, Limited Edition to be out first and then I think I might as well wait for that and read it in its ultimate format, in its ultimate leather-bound format. But who knows, I absolutely love Miss Bond and the Stormlight Archive, as I think many of you know already by now, and I also like Lightbringer by Brandwicks. So I think if my mood strikes, I might just end up reading Threadlight Trilogy more than expected, and I think there's a good chance I will end up living this one, based on the reviews and comments I heard from readers anyway. I mean, this is at the top 5 spot. And the other series that received 20 for votes is Ilborn, the first book in Ilborn Saga by Daniel T. Jackson. So actually two books are out in the series now. The second book is I Dual Sin and somehow I still haven't read this one despite loving Ilborn so much. I think it is a terrific character driven fantasy with characters making questionable actions. One of the characters in Ilborn is one of the most despicable characters I've come across. I hated her so much, but at the same time, I cannot deny that the characters, all of them were so compelling. Whether you love or hate them, they were all so compelling. And the way uh, Daniel T. Jackson writes, the writing is very accessible, and almost every chapter keep ending on a cliff. Hangers. And because of that, the narrative constantly compelled me to keep on continuing to the next chapter repeatedly. I heard from Ilborn fans that the second book, I Dual Sin, is even better, and I'm quite excited to find out whether that will come true or not. And now at the number 3 spot with 25 votes is Mortal Techniques by Rob J. Hayes. And this means Rob J. Hayes is the only author with two series on this top 15 list. I guess we can safely say that Rob J. Hayes books, many readers love them. And I've read Mortal Techniques, it is an incredible series, and I think, in my opinion, it is Rob J. Hayes' best work. Whether it's Never Die, uh, the first book is Never Die, the second book is Pond's Gambit. I didn't like Pond's Gambit uh, as much as Never Die, but the third book, Spirits of Vengeance, in my opinion, is Rob J. Hayes' best work so far. Out of all his books that I've read anyway, because yeah, I haven't read War Eternal series, as I mentioned 
earlier but i really love mortal techniques i think it is an amazing series and if you love wuxia asian inspired fantasy or anime well i think this series will be very much suitable for you give this series a try all three books in the series so far are standalone fantasy they are a series of connecting standalone fantasy books and as soon as the fourth book is out i will certainly read it as soon as possible and now we move on to the runner up spot it is the bound and the broken series by ryan k hill with 39 votes that's 14 votes above the number three spot so yeah ryan k hill and the bound and the broken if you've been active on the fantasy community not just self-published fantasy community i think you will have heard about the bound and the broken series i recently did a why you should read the bound and the broken series so far video after i finished reading the third book in the series of war and ruin i mentioned that the bound and the broken is the next classic dragon rider epic fantasy people in the future readers in the future will remember this i think as a classic for dragon rider fantasy the first book of blood and fire was okay it was good but in my opinion, it was nothing special. And then I read The Fall, but after I read the second book of Darkness and Light, my opinion of the series immediately changed in a positive way. It is a vastly better book compared to Of Blood and Fire, and also the prequel novella uh, The Fall. And somehow the massive of War and Ruin is even better than Of Darkness and Light. So yeah, it is an amazing series, an epic fantasy series. The scope of the series after we reach Of War and Ruin has turned into something incredibly epic. And there is, I think, uh, two books left in the series. And I cannot wait to find out what Ryan Cahill has prepared for us for the rest of the series. I think it will be even better than Of War and Ruin. At the very least, I think the final book will be even better and epic. I guess in a way you can count the Bound and the Broken series as the best self-published fantasy series on this list because at the number one spot, it is a standalone book. I think many of you know about this now, but with 52 votes, the number one spot belongs to The Sword of Kai Gen by M.L. Wang. I think a lot of you will know my thoughts on this one. I call this book a masterpiece, a standalone masterpiece, and up to this day, it is still my favorite standalone book. It is still my favorite sub published fantasy book of all time. And I do not think, and I do not think this status will change. If it changes, I will definitely let people know. But right now, I cannot imagine I will find a better sub published fantasy book than The Sword of Kai Gen. Everything about this book hit me emotionally it clicked with me so well everything about the sword of kaigen clicked with me so damn well the characters still live in my mind and in my heart i still remember every scene from this book so vividly and right now i'm waiting for the limited edition hardcover published by great mark and then after i receive that book i will certainly do another reread of the sword of kaigen in my opinion as i said this is a pure masterpiece and if you haven't read the sword of kai again make sure to read it and yeah i think this number one spot is totally well deserved so yeah that's the end of this video that's the top 15 self-published fantasy series according to 300 readers once again all of these books and series are available on kindle unlimited and i did not contribute any of my votes any of my personal votes i might end up making an updated top self-published fantasy books or series within this year but until then, this list, once again, is a compilation. It is a top 15 self published fantasy series according to 300 readers, more or less 300 readers. So that's the end of today's video. That's pretty much it for me today. Do let me know what you think about this top 15 series and how many series on this list have you read and which one do you love? I will do this kind of big video again probably next month. Uh, well, maybe not next month, maybe in May. I will need to take a break because yeah, compiling this data and I will leave the link to the votes in the description down below. But yeah, compiling this data, writing all of them down into a spreadsheet, they are very time consuming. So yeah, I will need a break before I make another video like this but until then uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support bye bye lastly i want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me